Okay, all right. So hello, dears. <laughs> so welcome to your uh, pre-recorded lecture na po in clinical bacteriology. And for this part, we're going to start now with um, processing different specimens. Okay, so um, moto na, manata, manajuta, master na ta, hmm, hopefully. Um, from the start, culture media prep, gram staining, acid fast, blah, 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 biochem, yun yung pinaka-favorite, and then ang AST na po. And then finally, uh, we now go to the different processing of different specimens. Because again, diri ta mag-start. Diri kita mag-start. Um, I'm going back to the start. Charot. This is the start of something new, Char. This is the start of our processing. Of course, makadawat man tayong specimen. Dira man dyan mag- Dira ang source atong kagaw. Okay, if wala specimen, wala tayong kagaw. Alright? So, we'll now go now to the different uh, processing of different specimens. Okay? So, mag-start sa tag swab specimens. Okay? The different types of swab specimens. Um, para maka- so, na get yung flow sa inyong work sa, as a medtech sa micro lab puhon. So, of course, mudawat sa kang swab specimens, okay? Uh, specimens, of course. So, different processing, the correct processing, the proper processing, transport medium, etc., etc. And then after, of course, you now perform, depending sa medium, uh, depending sa specimen, direct microscopic exam. So, mag gram stain baka, acid fast, alright? And then after, makakita kasi mong gram stain result, ah, okay, mga gram positive coxi, gram positive bacilli, whatever. You now choose the plating media na kailangan nimo. Or actually, pwede at the simultaneously nag-create kag smear for gram stain and you are also plating or nag-culture na kasi mong culture media. Alright? And then after na po, uh, tubo, identify na po ka using your biochem. Alright? And then after na ka maka-identify si mong pathogen, and then isubject na ni mo siya to the different antibiotics using AST, and then make the final report. And muna siya itong i-release sa doctors, or release na to siya. Muna siya itong i-release na result. Okay? Nag-gets ra. Muna i-flow na to. Okay? Nag-gets ra. Alright? So kung unsa mang ganit ni mga i-discuss na to na kagaw diri na mga cause of infection, so, mubalik ragi apunta on how to identify them based on biochem. And then after biochem, AST na po. Alright? Kagets ra? Muna siyang overall flow yun na to sa bakte na lab. Alright? Okay. Ayan. So, we'll now start with the swab specimen culture. So, what are, you know, swab specimens? Okay? Alright, so we'll start first with this table. Uh, the levels of specimen prioritization. So, unsa may priority na to? Kinsayin yung priority. Naging priority ka na ba? Charot! <laughs> okay, so ang pinakauna yun na to are your critical or invasive. So, kanisha ang mga specimens na these are specimens that may contain organisms or pathogens that can really be life-threatening. Okay, so example, amniotic fluid. So, if na yung mga kagaw dira, that could lead to miscarriage, okay? That could lead to the death of the mother and also the baby. Blood, brain, CSF, heart, valves, pericardial. As you can see, these specimens usually are specimens coming from vital organs or katunyong mga organs na usap, usa lang kapalya or something, jutaps na, patap, yatap sa you die of patient. So, muna siya critical invasive. So, kanin siya ito i-prioritize. So, kung maabot niya siya na specimens atong lab, muna siya ito i-prioritize yung culture dayon. Okay? Because we want to make sure na ma-isolate dayon na to ang pathogen na makakos sa disease. Okay? Because again, these are these uh, sources of specimen can be life-threatening, okay? Kung na pathogen dira. Alright. Unpreserved, uh, because again, body fluids, bone, drainage, feces, feces, sputum, and tissue. Because these are not preserved. So, it could be na dili siya, if dili nito siya ma-process after or dayon, pwede ang mga kagaw na naa dito mamatay because they are not preserved well. Okay? So, ato siyang i-process as much as possible. Pero if magdungan ni silang 1 and 2, of course, so naunjo na ito ang 1. Because again, that's the priority. Alright? Okay, quantitation required. Third, catheter, urine, tissue for quantitation because again, uh, it's just for number. You just want to know if pila ka colonies na ah. And if preserved much more, siya nagyod ang last. Okay, it's well preserved man. So you're quite confident enough na ah, okay naman siya preservative. So at least man lang ma-preserve or ma, yeah, ma-preserve ato ang kagaw. Ma-inhibit ma ang growth muna sa kagaw, ma-stop ma for a while, and then para ma-prevent ang deterioration po sa kagaw. And as you can see, ang mga swabs, ayan, as you can see, naa siya diri, naa siya sa last. Because most often than not, um, your swab specimens, if maabot na siya sa lab, they are usually placed in a transport medium. Okay, because we, your swabs magod are easily dry, can easily dry out, alright? Dali lang mauga, like me, charot lang. <laughs> Dali lang mauga, so we want to make sure na ibutan siya transport medium para dili wala yung massive deterioration of your organisms. Okay? Alright, that's for your specimen prioritization. So, asa mang kaani, na-prioritize ka ba? Or basin napaka sa low char, like me? Char lang, joke lang, drama. Okay, alright. So, we'll now start with your general characteristics of your swab. Okay. 
Now, first one is, of course, your swabs are generally not recommended. Why? Because of the following reasons. Number one, they do not provide sufficient quantity, okay? They are easily contaminated and, as mentioned, they can become dried out. Because, again, these are swabs, uh, pwede siyang, pag, you know, sa pag-collect lang daan, dili siya representative of the sample or gamay ra ang nakuha pag swab and pwede siya makontaminate. Because, again, i-swab ni mo ang, ang area kung asa ang, ang samad or asa ang uh, infection. So, pwede na siya ma mga mga normal flora, mga other contaminating agents. And aside from that, dali siyang ma-dry out. Because remember that these um, swabs are cotton most of the time. So, if dili niyo siya ang transport medium, ma-expose siya to the environment, pwede siyang mo-evaporate dahil yun or mo-dry out. Hence, ma-loose or mawala itong mga organisms. Okay? Alright. Ayan. And swabs are appropriate lang daw or it, it's usually advisable for specimens coming from the upper respiratory tract, your URT, okay, throat, kana dira, external ear, and genital tract, okay. So, um, the next lecture na to is throat swab culture, man, okay. So, uh, that's another way of getting swab sa throat, okay, upper respiratory tract. Alright, so these are mga, ano daw, appropriate specimens, sources of specimens for swab, okay. And the tips of swabs may be, uh, again, most common is cotton, pwede siyang dacron or rayon, or calcium alginate. Now, usually, ang cotton ang pinaka-common, but your cotton tip swabs are not advisable for some uh, specimens, especially if they contain these organisms, Neisseria and Bordetella, because uh, your cotton tip swabs have excessive fatty acids that may become toxic okay, to your um, uh, and gonorrhea or bordetella pertussis. Please take note. Can in cotton tip swabs. Lumalabas din sa boards. Kinsay toxic or asa toxic ang nesiria or kinsay toxic sa uh, cotton ni Nana. Alright? Okay. So, if ever man gani na ay and gonorrhea or bordetella pertussis, usually atong gamitin is dacron or rayon. Alright? Okay. And uh, swab collection systems, again, are available, again, most often than not, na gano siya kauban na transport medium. Because again, di ba, they are easily dried out. So, kung samot na if ang, ang patient kay naas sa ka room, layo sa lab, so dito na hitabo ang swabbing, alright, so of course, mo travel pa ka, so if layo-layo pa ang pag-travel, so pwede siyang ma-expose to air, which could lead to drying out, so mawala ito organism. So, it's best yun na siya transport medium. Alright, and most often than not, as mentioned, your swabs usually, if mag-swab mga gani, nagyo na siya kauban na transport medium. Okay? Alright. Kung sakit mga transport medium, pwedeng stewards, pwedeng amys, all right, or carry blair, all right, depending on the specimen. All right. Now, for the different composition of the swab, as mentioned, di ba, cotton is uh, toxic to your uh, nasiria, okay? As a gani, kinsay toxic sa cotton, nasiria, all right? Your calcium alginate also is toxic, all right? Sino ba mga toxic dyan? Charot, imong X, charot lang. Calcium alginate are toxic to viruses. Ayan, please take note. And also, it inhibits, all right, PCR. Ayan, please take note guys, lumalabas din sa boards. Calcium alginate inhibits PCR and viruses, toxic siya. And lastly, your shaft, okay? Lahi na shaft ng inyong hanggi, ano ha? Kanang gina-handle for, um, for swabbing. If wood na siya guys, okay? That is toxic to chlamydia. Alright? Please take note. Kung wooden ang shaft, katong ginagunitan sa imuhang ang cotton, uh, sa imong swab, right? Imong gina-hold para mo swab ka. If wooden siya, it's toxic to chlamydia. Okay, please take note. Alright. Okay. Ayan. And we have different pictures, of course. Uh, uh, we have different types. There. And what we'll be focusing in this lecture, ang una is rectal or anal, of course. Uh, wound swabs, ear and eye specimens, and lastly, urethral and penile specimens. And here are pictures. Again, this is the most common cotton swab. This one is your calcium alginate. As you can see, calcium alginate ning tip. All right? Okay. And lastly, again, uh, dacron swab. Muna siya, dacron. Okay? All right. If, I think muna siya ang pinaka-safe na swab. Yun. Kaya wala kayo na toxican aning dacron. <laughs> For cotton and calcium alginate, di ba? Na ito mga natoxican niya. All right. Now, when we receive swab specimens, it usually your swab specimens have a general streaking pattern. Okay? And yung streaking pattern yun una is your swab Okay, katong swab ni mo. You inoculate by rolling, okay, on the first quadrant of your primary plate. Okay, so example, BAPBA or, or MAC. Example, in this picture, we have blood agar. So, your uh, swab, okay, ato siyang i-roll, okay, 
alright, sa first quadrant, okay? So, as you can see, until makaform siya o zigzag na appearance, okay? And then after, once makaroll na ka, you use now your inoculating loop to use, uh, to, to uh, spread to the four quadrants using MIS na, okay? So, generally, kanigyo ng mga swabs, we inoculate it this, in this manner, okay? So, uh, sa throat swab, in, their, in our next lecture, inaani po ng pag-inoculate. But sa swab specimens, uh, generally, inaani yung pag-streak or pag-inoculate. You, you roll at the first quadrant, Okay, after rolling, okay, you dispense na or usually na ay uh, enrichment brought by butang sa imuhang swab. And then, for the remaining quadrant, second to fourth, mag-MIS na ka. Okay, alright. Ayan. Okay, and continued, uh, still the same, incubate at specified conditions. Example, imong organism ganahan is enteric, so normal incubation period. Kung fastidious, hemophilus ni Syria, so mag-candle jar ka or CO2 incubator. Ana. And then, observe for characteristic colonies, okay, kung sa may colonies nila. Katatong colonial morphology, is it small, is it opaque, is it raised, is it flat, whatever. And then, you perform now biochemical test. Kaget siya sa ato ang procedure, biochemical test for identification. Diba? So, balik na po ka for biochem. Kung sa ito mga biochem, to identify them. Alright? Okay. Ayan. Okay. So, we'll now start with the first type of swabs. Your, uh, and then, of course, for biochem, after biochem, you make the final report. Like, um, strep bio isolated after pila ka hours of incubation. E. coli isolated after 24 hours incubation. Inana. All right? Okay. Ayan. So, for rectal and anal swabs, these are our first type of swab. For rectal and anal swab, uh, the specimen that of choice, if usually diarrhea, it's not the swab, but the, the stool mismo. Okay? Not the material on the swab. But there are some instances na uh, mugamit ta og swab. Samot na if ka na may mga outbreaks daw, usually mag-swab ta. Okay? Para dali. <laughs> All right? Pero generally daw, for diarrheal stool or for diarrhea, the specimen of choice for culture is the diarrheal stool. Okay. Next, uh, rectal swab, again, acceptable siya for diarrheal pathogens. If infants, ang patient, okay, kung bata, of course, okay, if baby, dili siya ka ingon kung when siya malibang, di ba? Malibang ragin siya dahil yun, di ba? So, mas okay na lang i-swab siya, a rectal swab. Or patients with uh, acutely ill with diarrhea because acute pa lang, onset, bago pang gasugod. So, therefore, dagan pa kayong kagaw na. Dagan pa ka yung... Um, pathogens na ma-isolate. So, mas okay siyang iswab during acute phase of the uh, diarrhea. Okay? And swabs for culture dapat always na ay feces. Kaya walay pulos if walay feces because your pathogens are found in the feces. So, kung mag-swab ang ganika, dapat na ay feces. It must show feces. And anal swabs, uh, usually not acceptable for culture kung agents of diarrhea. But we use anal swabs usually for um, mga STDs or mga STIs, those who engage in uh, anal sex or anal sex. Uy. Okay, alright, ayan. So, gently insert the swab, ang collection method na to, you insert the swab beyond mga 1 to 1.5 cm of the anal sphincter, rotate slowly, and then remove and place it in transport medium. Again, the swab should show feces. For anal swab, for N. gonorrhea, di ba? Imo iswab ang anal crypts. I'm not sure what's an anal crypts. But I think ang, ang, ang kilid-kilid na sa anus, alright, sa sulod sa anus, and then ang kilid-kilid niya inside the anal ring. And avoid, this time you don't want fecal contamination because we're looking now for gonorrhea. Again, this, uh, this is a sexually transmitted disease for those who are engaging in anal sex. Alright? Okay. Ayan. Mm, ahem. Okay. So, dapat wala siya fecal contamination because your end gonorrhea are, are I think, nasa sa anal crypts, nasa sa kilid sa imong anus. Alright? So, you want to make sure na ang anal ring, di ba, should I draw it? Ayun na lang. <laughs> Just examine. Anal ring, di ba? Your anus and then ang kilid-kilid niya. Alright? Dito ni mo siya iswab. Okay? Because you want, we're looking for end gonorrhea. Alright? And another transport medium for enterics, kanang na mga feces, a very good example is, of course, your uh, carry blair medium. Yeah. Usually, carry blair medium usually used for stool, uh, for rectal swabs. Okay? For transport. Or for stool na transport. Okay? Carry blair. Alright. Ayan. And next, for collection medium, again, if GC or gonor gonococcal, you plate it immediately good bedside or if not, dapat na transport medium. Because again, if you mention na sa inyong lecture, na mention na po na ako siguro, your nasir gonorrhea is very sensitive to temperature changes and mga pH changes, etc. So it's as much as possible, ma-plate siya sa bedside. But if not, kailangan nyo siya ibutang in the proper transport medium. Okay? Uh, of course, table the sample with patient information, indicate the patient pathogen sought, and the time of collection. Okay, all right. And for end gonorrhea, dapat dili refrigerate ang specimen and deliver it to the lab within 30 minutes 
uh, of collection F possible. Okay. And another comment, if you're detecting for toxin released by Clostridioides difficile or dif difficile, delete rectal swab atong gamiton, but stool jude mismo. Okay? Clostridioides cl C. Dif difficile is actually um, Clostridium na siya, guys. Ha? Ang yang old name is Clostridium uh, difficile. Okay? Or difficile. But it's now, ang yang new name now is Clostridioides uh, dif difficile or difficile. Alright. Okay. Ayan. So that's for rectal and anal swab. Okay. Now we go now to different uh, culture. Okay. Some enteric pathogens. Yeah, ilahang colonial characteristics. So we'll start first, of course, with Shigella. All right. So here are some pictures of Shigella on different um, stool culture media. So we have MAC, H E and XLD, and these are its characteristic colonial characteristic. On MAC, of course, it's an L NLF, non lactose fermenter. On H E, it's green colonies. All right. And for Shigella on XLD, it's colorless colonies. Don't worry, guys. Kani mga different uh, culture media for stool. Kani MAC, H E, XLD. I'll discuss this when we go to stool culture. Kaya mas magamit siya dito. Okay? You have different components. On say colors sa colonies. On say expected colonies, etc. etc. Okay? Alright. But for now, we'll now go to kanira. Focus lang. Shigella. Alright. Okay. Next is we have another enteric pathogen. Your Yersinia. Okay? Alright. Yersinia SPP. On MAC, according to Bailey ni siya, non-lactose and may be color peach. Colorless to peach. Okay? H.E. Salmon, kanina color. Wala akong kakita dito ka ng colonies niya. Naglisod kong pangita. Pero ang color sa salmon kay Ani. Okay? Merks orange, dapit salmon orange. And for Senya XLD, yellow or pwedeng colorless colonies. Okay. Alright. That's for culture. And last, mga some enteric pathogens. Of course, you have Campylobacter jejuni on its specific na agar niya. Campy blood agar. So, gray to pink, uh, slightly mucoid, and na tailing effect along streak line. So, when you say tailing effect, example, muna yung uh, streak, so, nagsunod-sunod siya ang colonies. Nagsunod-sunod siya sa streak line. Tailing effect. Nagsunod-sunod sila. Alright? Okay. That's for Campylobacter jejuni. Okay. Ang sagan si Campylobacter, ang sa itong uh, disease na pwede niya makos, sa itong autoimmune disorder, you have the Guillain-Barre. Diba? Guillain-Barre syndrome. Alright. Okay. Alright, okay. And last, of course, for no initial gonorrhea on chocolate agar. Small, grayish white, convex, translucent, shiny colonies with either smooth or irregular margins. Alright. So, kani smooth ang margins niya. Diba? So, now, kabalo na mo mo describe ang colonies, diba? So, we, we're done. We have discussed that in your colonial morphology na lecture. Diba? Okay. Alright. So, those are for rectal and anal swabs. Usually, we are detecting our enteric pathogens. But generally, the most ideal uh, specimen yun nato is stool and not um, uh, swab. Okay. All right. Now, for the next specimen are your wound specimens. Now, your wound specimens, uh, these are wound specimens, kanang mga sugat. All right. And it's important that you specify you the anat anatomic site. You don't label it as only wound. Okay. You deter, you, you put the specific anatomic site like uh, wound specimen from eye, wound specimen from leg, etc. etc. Dapat specific yun siya. Okay? Alright. Uh, do you distinguish between the surface and deep wounds? When you say surface, surface na good, like epidermis siya ang na, 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 nakita, alright? Wala kayo siya uh, abscess, wala kayo nana, wala, ay, wala kayo ka nang murag, wala kayo uh, murag ka nang hollow stuff or like murag wala y, wala swelling, okay, or something like that. Surface lang yun, murag na scratch, inana. And for deep wounds or surgical wounds, muna na siya. Ang katun na ay murag swelling, na ay murag nana sa sulod, etc. And if usually ang deep wounds, they are usually associated with anaerobes. Because as you can see, anaerobes, deep wounds, so meaning they're far from an oxygen source. So ang mutubog sa deep wounds usually are your anaerobes. So if surface wounds gani, dili good ka maka-expect maka og anaerobes dira. Why? Because again, surface. Surface ra. So they are well exposed to oxygen. So ay mong anaerobes, dili mutubo dito. Alright? Okay. Ayan. Um, attention to skin decontamination is critical because uh, your skin, because again, these are wounds, so sa skin niya na hitabo, uh, usually they are teeming with normal flora. So you want to decontaminate as much as possible the wound para dili, dili siya ma-contaminate o maayo by the normal flora. And the quality of wound culture is assessed by gram stain and the presence now of daghang epithelial cells usually would disqualify um, in some laboratories or invalidate the significance of culture results because the presence of too much epithelial cells, which me, means that 
your specimen is contaminated very much by your normal flora, okay, or normal na mga constituents sa skin. So, dili na kayo significant ang results sa imuhang culture, ana. Okay, ang nitubo, mostly, ang uh, normal flora na, okay? Alright, ayan. And the representative specimen dapat, uh, imo siyang, i if mo swap mga nikagun, dapat dilira ang pus, or dilira ang nana, or exudate, dapat sa sulod yun sa wound mismo. Imong i, i, i swab ang advancing margin of the lesion. So example, kani ang lesion, dapat kaning kilit sa sulod, imo siyang iswab. Okay? And iswab po ang tunga, dili lang yun ang pus, or dili lang ang nana. Okay? Because that is not uh, representative of the uh, lesion. Okay? Alright. And for anaerobic studies, as mentioned again, ang specimen of choice and an aspirate. Okay? So, you use a syringe ba? Imong i-aspirate ang sulod sa imuhang abscess or sa imuhang hubag. Okay? Dili ka mag-swab. Because again, you're looking for anaerobic uh, bacteria or anaerobic organisms. Alright? Okay, so dili ang swab. And dapat mag-transport medium ka o anaerobic po na transport media. So, we'll have a different lecture on anaerobic culture later na. Uh, padulong na sa end of our lectures. Okay? So, don't worry. Alright. Ayan. So, here are different, again, wound surface. As you can see, kutub lagi sa skin. Mabaw ra kayo siya. Like, muragog scratch, na gas gas. Okay, nana. Pero, as you can see, ang deep. Ayan. So, as you can see, di ba, hubag siya. Murag na siya, sulud. Good. Alright? So, very conducive for an anaerobic uh, organism. Kay, the environment there is anaerobic. Natabunan siya ang oxygen. Wala kay oxygen na makareach. Maka okay? Alright. So for the next video, we'll continue to the wound specimens until asa mangani. Kaya medyo tas-tas ang chika sa wound specimens. Okay? Alright.